When I was a baby, I was rejected by my blood dad and that actually played a serious role in my relationship with God. I struggled with calling God Father and meaning it. And I want to be real about that because I know there are several of y'all out there who have faced rejection by either your mom or your dad and you struggle with understanding that God is Father and having that father-daughter or father-son relationship. And I want to let you know that I get it. I totally get it and it's a process sometimes some processes are shorter than others some are longer than others and I remember when I was younger I felt like I had to constantly prove myself prove that I'm just as athletic as the next girl I mean I felt like I had so much to prove but deep down I wasn't even confident within myself and I didn't like the fact that my skin color already was not really likable when I was in elementary school and middle school and even my hair texture was not likable. So I was already faced with so many different things and I didn't know how to really navigate myself through all of that. And deep down, it hurt. It really hurt. So in this video, I'm really excited to share my heart with you guys. My relationship with God is my most treasured possession, but it was not always like that. And y'all are about to see right here, right now. I went into high school knowing about God, but not having a personal relationship with him. I wasn't hot, but I wasn't cold either. I hadn't made God personal to me. Whenever it came down to expressing myself, I tended to go to writing or typing out how I feel. I had diaries growing up. I knew that my truest feelings came out that way. I remember God tugging at me to start taking his word seriously when I was around 15 years old. I looked into doing some Bible plans and decided to hold myself accountable to completing Bible plans. These Bible sessions lasted maybe around 10 minutes. I would complete the reading and then write down what I thought the scripture meant. And being honest, I didn't always understand what I was reading and I was leaning on my own understanding on trying to understand what scriptures meant. I didn't know how to seek God for myself because it seemed too hard for me to do. I didn't really know how to hear from God or see God in things. I just knew I needed to get in the Bible more. When I was 16, I remember God convicting me on reading the Bible just to check it off of my mental checklist. And for a while, I was not listening, although I knew I was in the wrong. Not only was I in the wrong with that, but I was living a divided life. I wanted to fit in. I was in a school district that I didn't grow up in. I wanted to be a part of conversation so I wouldn't appear to be dumb or too innocent. I wanted to learn lyrics to worldly songs so that when people get quote unquote turned up, I would know the lyrics to the songs. Jesus wasn't my life. He was only a fraction of my life, a small one. I wasn't completely open about Jesus in high school, although compromising on things never felt right deep inside of me. Unless I was approached by someone who needed some spiritual counseling, then I would open up more about Jesus. I knew about the right things and I said the right things, but I hadn't given all of myself to Jesus. When June 15, 2017 came, I was convicted to my core. I repented and committed my life to Jesus. I was done treating Jesus how I was treating him and wanted to do this for real. Jesus put a fire in me to speak his name boldly. As I was getting to know God more, I still had my issues. I wasn't choosing the right friends, the right guys to date, or conversations to be involved in. I still had a taste for secular things. I knew it wasn't right, but I didn't want to let go of Jesus or the love I was starting to have for him. Some moments felt like I was living in my own hell because of severe oppression I had went through. My self-esteem was so low that I never found my validation or worth in God but in the guys I was dating or interested in. It got me in situations I had no business in being in and had me so low that I was close to taking my own life by walking in the plan Satan laid out for me. I saw the plan in the spirit and heard his voice talk to me. Satan's suggestions and lies sounded like truth. Nobody at school knew my pain. Thank God his voice was louder than Satan's in that moment. When I joined the track team in high school, I became the captain during my second year being on the team. And I took Jesus with me even on the track and asked him to run with me. He was my motivation to get to the finish line. 
I made the sport I love personal with Jesus. And I started to really notice that Jesus was using my voice on the track team, on social media, and even in my church. Writing in my prayer journal became more and more personal to me behind closed doors. God was giving me dreams and encounters. And I started asking questions and desiring to be filled with God's wisdom. I wanted to know what God's calling was on my life, and I knew I wanted to change the world with God using me. God was really starting to grow me and mature me. I'm just, I'm thankful for this journey. I'm thankful for this ride. I would not trade it for anything else. I would totally, I mean, I'm thankful for my heartbreak. I'm thankful for those nights where I cried myself to sleep. But I'm also grateful for the times where I celebrated. I'm thankful for the times where I gave God the glory that he deserves. You know what I mean? I had already made up my mind that I wanted to start my college years with Jesus, and I wanted to end them with Jesus. Although I was building a solid relationship with him, I was not ready for the spiritual warfare I was going to face in college like I thought I was. I was hit with distractions not even a week into living on my college campus. Distractions left and right. I didn't truly know how to fight distractions in the spirit. Don't get me wrong, though. I loved the freedom of having my own schedule, choosing when I wanted my classes to be, being finished with classes early in the day, creating my very own workout routine, being on the step team, forming relationships with some of the staff, being on the dean's list. It was great. But as exciting as that was, I wish I was more solid in my relationship with Jesus Christ. Here's why I say that. Even though I loved Jesus in college, I still didn't like how I physically looked. Because of that, I wasn't secure in my relationship with Jesus, and I wasn't secure in how he made me. I lowered my standards, hung out with a friend group that didn't benefit my relationship with Jesus, and found myself in a constant mental warfare. Whenever I had a lot on my mind, I went to the track to walk laps while listening to my Jesus music and praying. I remember a night when I couldn't stop crying. I cried in the shower in my dorm, hoping nobody could hear me, and cried some more when I took a walk outside at night. Things were not working out. My academic plan had errors in it. I didn't make the track team. I didn't have friends who sharpened me spiritually. I was constantly being asked to go to parties because I chose to not go every time I was asked. I kept hearing stories of people fornicating, I was approached by different guys who were no good for me, and I was in a relationship that wasn't right. I was made fun of for being a Christian, and was even told that I talk about Jesus too much. I felt so alone deep down. I questioned my identity, my purpose, and if I was even supposed to be at this college. Looking back, I see that just having a love for Jesus wasn't enough. I was relying on my own strength instead of relying on the Holy Spirit. I wasn't fully equipped because my faith was partially in Jesus, in the things that I saw, and in my own strength. When Jesus would try to teach me who I was in him, I didn't believe him. I chose to believe it for other people. Even the crowd I chose to hang with, I always had a void of encouragement for them, but I wasn't taking my own advice. I knew I was slowly being destroyed on the inside, slowly pulling myself away from Christ, and was heartbroken because I thought I was strong enough to handle it all. But the truth is, my strength will never be strong enough in this life. It's the Holy Spirit's strength that I neglected and was the missing piece. I needed to be in tune with Him and needed a deeper cultivated relationship with Him. I needed to be deeper than surface level way deeper than surface level in my relationship with God's Spirit. I needed to go deeper in the Bible, deeper in worship and obedience, deeper in my faith in Jesus. In my dorm room, I remember Jesus telling me, eyes on me, because my eyes were all over the place and were only on him partially. He caught my attention. But thank God for his mercy and grace, right? I met some people on the track team, and one of them invited me to a church he thought I'd like. So I went, and I really liked it. I was challenged and reminded of the teaching I got from my church back at home. The young adults were welcoming, and I felt like I was a part of an atmosphere with other young adults who loved Jesus. 
Through all of this, I was still reading my Bible, still praying, still singing gospel music, still talking about Jesus on social media. I never stopped doing any of that, but I was realizing that there must be another level in God that I needed to get to. There must have been, and I knew I hadn't gotten there because of my lack of faith in Jesus. So how long this is going to take? Pretty sure this is going to be a long process to really see myself. And I'm not talking about just saying it. I'm talking about believing it in here <clears throat> and saying it from here that I can finally say, I see myself the way God sees me. I love myself the way God loves me, you know? So, yeah, this is probably going to be looked at. I don't know how long from now, like I said, and I just really hope, I really, 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 really hope this is going to be a part of my testimony and that this is going to touch somebody. When COVID broke out and the college kids were sent home, what I thought was going to happen turned out to be the complete opposite. I thought I was going to return back to my college and continue on the plan I thought was right. Instead, I was led by the Lord into a deep cleanse, a spiritual deep cleanse. The Lord had already spoke to me in such a profound way through the movie, I Still Believe. I cried so much, but it was beautiful at the same time. I had to blindly trust God and have a limitless faith in him. That was the message. During this deep cleanse, the Lord told me that everything that didn't point me to him had to go. I went through and examined everything that I was taking in through my eye and ear gates, from my photos, music, YouTube subscriptions, every social media app I had on my phone, and I even deleted some. My contacts, my friendships, movies I liked, certain clothes I wore, my habits, literally everything. My entire life needed close examination and I needed to be deeply cleansed. I felt my flesh dying just like Galatians 2.20 says. I didn't know exactly what was happening to me, but I knew that this process was very important for whatever was gonna come next in my life. I felt a shift in my spirit for such a long time, like a train shifting from one track to the next. One night the Lord led me to John 13 verse seven and spoke directly to me. He told me that all of my plans for college had to go, all of them. He told me to let go of my agenda and to trust him. And honestly, those were the hardest words from the Lord I've ever heard because I am a planner at heart and I already had trouble trusting. I already did. And it was hard. But the Lord took me to a place where I had to leave everything behind and follow him blindly, just like he told his disciples to do when he chose them. I chose to obey despite the many tears I shed and the pain I felt from letting everything go. Next thing I know though, I find myself waking up at five and six in the morning to meet with the Lord, not as a chore, but because I was so excited to meet with the Lord and for him to meet me. My hunger and thirst for him increased like never before. Anytime I opened up my Bible, I expected for God to teach me something new and to fill me up with his word. And the thing is, I knew he would. I studied his word for hours and often got caught up in his presence. I never wanted to leave. I found myself asking Jesus out on dates, asking him to meet me at the dining room table, in my room, in the shower, at my neighborhood lake, in the kitchen, in my car, in the backyard, the grocery store, the gym, literally anywhere. I made Jesus my number one priority. I wanted him in the morning, at night, and everything in between. The very words in the Bible became so alive in my world. They became a part of my spiritual DNA. I began to identify myself with scriptures and attach myself to the King. The message of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross wasn't just a script to me anymore. It became my identity. I started to crave more things of God and noticed that I wasn't even having a taste for secular things. My appetite for those things were leaving. My TV became Bible sermons, teachings, and listening to Christian podcasts. 
again, not as a chore, but because I made Jesus my everything and listened to the convictions that he was giving me. I fell so in love with him. I was so intentional with him and fell into his arms. I was so intentional that I even wanted my lock screen and home screen on my phone to remind me of the king. I even wanted to be reminded of him when I walked in my room and saw scriptures I had put up on my wall. Worship and gospel music wasn't just something to sing and groove to anymore, just something to feel good, just something to play. No, it became my soul's message to God and his message to me. I began to adore the king truly. I even defined our relationship as Exodus 15 verse 2. The Lord is my strength and my song. I began to tell myself, you're beautiful, while looking at myself in the mirror, as if it was natural. I started looking at myself differently. My gosh. My prayers and my prayer journals got longer and longer. Even my verbal prayers on my knees got longer and longer. I found myself repenting and blessing the Lord naturally. Scripture became my prayers. I knew it made the king smile, and it had been my prayer for him to smile on me, and it still is. God became not just my best friend, but my safety net, my king, my father, my life's mission, my smile, my oxygen, <laughs> and my laugh. I gave him the keys to my heart and constantly asked him to train my heart to receive, my brain to comprehend, my ears to hear, and my eyes to see him. I meant it every time I said it to the king. He's done nothing but good to me. My gosh, he's been so good to me. To this day, my soul burns to see the lost saved, to see the lukewarm snatched out of the enemy's camp, and to see the testimony of the Lord in people's lives. Why? Because the Lord truly did it for me. Because you look like the light on the outside does not mean you're full of it on the inside. Just because you go to church in your fancy clothes does not mean you're one of God's sheep Monday through Saturday. Just because you may say a really long prayer and you're the first to get to church on Sunday, that don't mean you love the Lord Monday through Saturday. That don't mean you know the Lord Monday through Saturday. My sheep know me. I know them. They hear my voice. And they follow me. Amen. My biggest tip for you guys for y'all's personal relationships with God is intentionality. The way I went about it is I made up my mind, this is what I'm going to do and nothing is going to stop me. You have to have your mind made up that God is who you're going to pursue. You're going to pursue his heart. You're going to pursue his face. You got to make it up in your mind and not let anything get in the way of that or let anything take priority over that. You got to be intentional behind what you do and you got to set out time. How are you supposed to get to know somebody and you never spend time with them? How are you supposed to get to know somebody and you never ask what are they like? What makes them happy? What makes them angry? Things like that. And as you spend more time with them, God will open the windows of your understanding. But you got to give him a fair shot. You don't have to be at a certain level to pursue God. You can be at level zero and pursue God. Amen. I love you guys so much. And I cannot wait to hear y'all's testimonies.